All right, it's official. She says recording in progress. So hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, Sean and I have been looking forward to finally jump, jumping on and talking to you about a positive emotion. It's, uh, you know, this is month number four that we're doing now. Um, we've talked about, um, yeah. God, what was that first session? Um, anatomy That's and physiology. That's right. Um, and then we talked about um, depression and anxiety. And then we talked about being overwhelmed and yay for a positive emotion this time. But uh, Sean's going to let you know kind of what he experienced as he was trying to put this together. But uh, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Angelo. Um, I've been with uh, working using essential oils for uh, several years now. Elaine and I my wife jumped into it and um, we pretty much haven't looked back since we got going. And one of the things that as we started learning, we were, we were finding out that yes, this helps with uh, some physical aspects of it, but it also has a, a, uh, an emotional aspect to the oils too. And, and this has always kind of intrigued us um, over the years as we used it. So we got together uh, several months back and Sean and I started discussing about doing this little series. So here we are. Um, tonight, we are going to be talking about peace. Sean, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. Um, my name is Sean Page. Um, Angelo and another colleague that uh, we worked with up at Hack uh, ganged up on me in the parking lot and addressed some concerns uh, that I had. Uh, at that time, my fingers were four times the size what they were and they were curling in and essentially I was going to lose my fingers. And they started making some suggestions. Um, anyhow, uh, that was my introduction and wasn't paying attention, but there is, um, measurable differences. Um, my fingers are now back to where they should be fully functional. Um, I've had um, GERD really, really bad and I was maxed out on all the meds and had to be stretched every three months. And again, adding the essential oils, I stopped being having to be stretched. Um, I have found the uh, pathway uh, to be awesome. Um, and I've had people uh, that live near me, uh, when they get in trouble, I'm known as the witch doctor. So uh, yeah, Angelo laughs at that. Um, so yeah, I, I am all for, I do not, as a nurse practitioner, I don't believe Western medicine is the end all and be all. No, you're right. Um, there is a time and a place for Western Med, yep. but there's also a bridge that can be built so you can uh, kind of combine those those two, the allopathic medicine and the uh, the natural products and stuff. So that's what I like about this. And that's what I like. That's one of the things I'm playing with. So without further ado, Sean, let's get started, shall we? Let we shall. Find... My computer has been acting up and been going very slowly lately. So um, it may take a couple seconds longer than normal. There we go. Can everybody see that? Yes. All right. So Sean, I'm going to make you the co-host. Right. All right, slide control. All right, you got slide control. Okay, um, we need to go over to um, full view, um, uh, presentation view. Or at the 
uh, upper right where the, uh, there we go. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so, computers is very, very slow for some reason. <laughs> give it some Geritol. All right. <laughs> All righty. Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, I do apologize in advance. Um, I left myself get run down. I had multiple irons in the fire. I was working on another certification course and uh, allowed my allergies to get out checked, which then triggered off my asthma. And then I started coughing to the point I aspirated. And so uh, if I do cough, I do apologize for that. So we're here to talk about peace. And Angelo, I do not have advancement uh, capabilities. All right, see so now. Says that I have it, but uh, yeah, I'm. All right, I'll go. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, of course, before we get started, we always mention a little declaration here. Um, we as uh, doTERRA advocates, um, we are not attempting to diagnose, cure, advise um, any kind of human disease, ailment, injury, infirmary, deformity, pain, or any other condition, physical or mental, real or imaginary, by any means uh, or, or instrumentality. This is simply just information that we have found that has worked for us. And we want to just share with you this information in hopes that you'll be able to use it and find it helpful for, for you and your families as well. All right. And Angela, there's a question uh, already uh, that needs to be addressed. Um, so anyhow, uh, what is peace? So when Angela and I started this process, the re references that we kept seeing were in terms of war. And it's like, no, 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 no. Um, so we fell back to good old Mer Merriam Webster. And you can see the definition here a state of tranquility or quiet, freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. Now, that didn't really help us. <clears throat> so from there, um, started getting into some of the research and what we found, um, there's this group out in Sweden, or over in Sweden, I should say, called the Pax Institute. And there was this article written uh, that was entitled The Conception of Peace-Rooted uh, Evolutionary Neurobiology. It was a really, really um, heavy paper, but full of information. And one of the things that it says I have to move some windows out so I can see what's going on here. Um, that the study of peace suffers from a lack of conceptual clarity. And in the first couple of pages, it's um, summary of paper after paper after paper that basically said that. But the one that struck me the most uh, came from Richmond when he said, defining peace and its dimensions is a, is a difficult task. There is no single definition. And that's um, what made it um, very challenging for us. Angela? So Angela and had this dis uh, discussion. It's like, wow, what are we going to do about that? So we decided to take this two-pronged approach. Um, how do we obtain peace? And once we have it, how do we maintain it? And if we already have it, great, let's, let's keep that. So that was the uh, mentality that he and I decided to take with this uh, program. Next, please. So, um, oh, wow. I told you my computer's slow. <laughs> All right. So um, the big thing is, is that we, I did a, an impromptu survey and granted the sample size was very small. It was only 15 people. And I basically asked them, is peace uh, a, a, a reality? And 73% of those people came back saying, no, it is not a real concept. Um, so one of the people that um, we were reading was Cloak and he goes into um, reviewing the hemispheres of the brain and the regions and all of this. And one of the things that came out is that the right side of the brain 
um, favors negative emotions and the left side of the brain favors positive emotions. The right side is this very holistic side. And so there is uh, this broad uh, canvas for anything to be done with. Where the left side, it's very much computer-like, ones and zeros, uh, and there can be no in-between. It either is or it isn't, so it's very logistical. And the brain is wired to only think positive things. If I tell you don't think about an elephant, and I'm sure if you were truthful, many of you already are conceptualizing an elephant in your brain. So with that, um, we realize that uh, this is um, this concept of peace is obtainable. All right. Now, Kringlebach and Bearings, um, when they started doing some research, they found that there were these hot spots, and you can see the little diamonds uh, or star-like um, uh, items that I have. And some of them were found deep within the brainstem, and they come up through the brain and in through the uh, cerebrum, as we talked about, and as they uh, describe it as an archipelago formation. And where these centers are, they respond very favorably to uh, neuro neurotransmitters, uh, the opioids and the endocannabinoids. Now, these areas are highly susceptible and they bring about happiness. Now, this happiness, when they started talking about and these areas got stimulated and they found these areas stimulated, they said, how do you feel now? And the respondents would say, peaceful. So yes, we can get to peace. Um, next, please. So um, we need to talk about some neurotransmitters. Now, we've talked about dopamine um, time and time again and serotonin. So we are going to see these over and over again. And as we know that dopamine is that um, neurotransmitter of wanting more, it's reward and it's pleasurable. And we want that because it's going to help us get over there. Now, serotonin is a mood stabilizer and it kind of chills us out. And so it's known as the neurotransmitter of peace and contentment. And again, if we want to get to peace, we need to have that stabilization to occur. Next, please. Then we have those uh, endorphins. Now, we haven't mentioned endorphins much, but um, they run around in the background. And what they do is they give us the sense of euphoria, but they're also very, very potent pain um, maskers. So they reduce the sensation of pain. And that sensation of euphoria is very beneficial for when we have peace because we are getting into that um, utopic state of where we want to be. Now, <clears throat> As we know, and have talked about before, um, our brain is constantly firing and sometimes we have to turn things off. And the principal um, neurotransmitter that helps do this is GABA, all right? And one of the things that we also know, notice is that um, GABA, higher levels of increased GABA reduce anxiety. Now, you cannot have two conflicting or polar ends occurring at the same time. And we're going to be talking about some monk studies. And what they say is monks, uh, when they are meditating, have um, they've measured their neurotransmitters and they notice um, the higher endorphins, the higher GABA, the higher serotonin, the higher dopamine. And when you question them on their day-to-day -day lives, they have very little anxiety, they have very little depression and almost no addictions. So Thank you, GABA. Next, please. So then there's our buddy norepinephrine. Now, this is a stim stimulatory um, neurotransmitter as we've talked before, but it also helps us to get into that zone of attention, focus, and learning. And that's also really important in order for us to get into peace because uh, Peace is something that takes a little bit more work to gain. So this neurotransmitter is kind of that uh, cutting edge for us. Next, please. <clears throat> now, 
Now, a neurotransmitter we have not talked about yet is oxytocin. And when you think about oxytocin, we tend to think of it in terms of childbirthing and breastfeeding. However, males also produce oxytocin as well as females. And with um, what they've noticed is um, in social relationships, and they would measure this out, when there was uh, a great sense of bonding or befriending of people and really trusting somebody, they noticed that those oxytocin levels were really high. And then it's like, okay, so when else does oxytocin get released? And they also noticed that it is released in positive things such as we've just talked about, but it's also released during times of negativity, all right, and high stress. So um, I'm kind of uh, work from the bottom up. With those stressful situations, one of the things that helps um, manifest stress is cortisol levels, is a normal response. And we need that to uh, help uh, with decreased inflammation and things of that nature. However, if cortisol gets out of check, it can start causing a lot of harm. So oxytocin is kind of the cop that kind of keeps uh, the cortisol levels in check. The other thing that they've noticed is that oxytocin has a very um, potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Uh, females, if you have gone through the process of childbirth and it was natural childbirth, there is a period of time afterwards that you feel zero pain and they're in, um, tying it back into the anti-inflammatory properties that um, oxytocin uh, uh, exudes. And as you can see, it also has a calming effect. And what, how it does this is it uh, recruits dopamine and serotonin to come to the party. Next, please. <coughs> Angelo, you're up. All right. So um, before we jump into the oils, um, I wanted to share this little little bit of insight with you. This uh, picture here actually comes from um, Oil Magic Book. And uh, although this uh, has some different um, emotions that we have talked about, uh, it, the basic gist of it is the same. And when we look at this scale, if you notice, we got some really like heavy, very um, um, hard feelings on the left hand side. Uh, and they will slowly transition to more positive, more lighter feelings as we go up and over onto the left hand side, right? So what we know is that it takes time to process and work through these emotions as we go through this scale or as we go from the heavier side, heavier side or darker side and try to get over to the, the lighter side emotions. But as we work through that, um, it takes a little bit of time, right? So let's say that, uh, you know, we, we, what I don't want you to do is set yourself up for failure, right? I don't want you to um, set a target to where, okay, where I'm feeling revenge or I'm feeling anger. And I know I want to be all the way over on enthusiasm and happiness. Um, that's almost an unrealistic jump. So what we have to do is kind of continually work through that. And let's just work on slowly getting over to that positive side, right? Maybe we go from anger to um, overwhelmment. Maybe that's the goal. But Maybe we only end up at worry. That's okay. We didn't get as far as we wanted to. The good part is, is that's still forward progress, right? So we continue to evaluate our situation. We continue to evaluate the oils that we can use and the things that we can do, the positive reinforcement to slowly make our way over into that, that those lighter sides. So just know that this is a long, this is a journey for some, um, some it's going to be longer than others, but, um, I don't want you to, um, kind of set yourself up and expect to go, uh, through a large leap forward and it doesn't happen. And then you get disappointed by that. So that was the purpose of this one. So let's talk about some of the different oils that we have when it comes to peace. 
Um, this is the picture off of the emotions wheel. This is the, the piece section. And you can see the different oils that are listed there. And once again, um, they always match it up to what are you trying to feel? What are we trying to establish? What are we trying to gain here, right? So you can, this is a simple tool that you can use to, to say, okay, if I'm here and I want to get to where I feel more grounded, then I may want to consider using balance, right? So here's a question I have for you guys. And I want you to think about it now. We could talk more about it later. But what do, what do you think about when you hear the word grounded? Just kind of picture that um, for now and we'll, we'll um, revisit that towards the end of this, this, uh, the slides. As I go through this, here's the other thing I want you guys to think about. There's going to be kind of a theme or it's kind of be um, a commonality that you're going to see as we talk about these oils. I want to see if you guys can catch on with it um, or if you notice anything peculiar or uh, consistent that works through this. Um, but one of the first oils that we talked about that come up was patchouli, right? This is the oil of physicality. And this kind of helps you throttle back. It kind of brings you back down to reality, kind of put your feet back on the ground kind of thing, right? Very common to use this oil when you're doing any kind of yoga or Tai Chi exercises because it's connecting the, the, the spirit and the body, right? Um, it kind of helps also with calming the fears and the nervous tension. And it's really good at kind of stilling the heart and the mind. You can see the different ways we can use it. Um, some of the positive, positive properties that go with that or somebody that who wants to feel more grounded, more confident, balanced and or stable, right? And um, there's some basic usage usages um, that you can see there on the bottom left. And of course, we can't do an, uh, a session on peace without talking about peace oil, right? <laughs> so here we are. Um, the first bullet kind of hit home for me, right? Uh, when we, what we try to do is we try to manufacture this piece by controlling the environment and the relationships we're in. Um, sometimes we fail at that. Often we fail at that. Sometimes we fail miserably at that. But um, this is a very common thing that we like to do. We like to think that we're in control of that. And that's not always the case. Uh, when we get afraid, uh, we always try to attempt to try to control others because this gives us that that artificial sense of that order or, or that feeling of safety. Um, what we're finding though is um, really connecting with some type of higher deity, some type of higher entity. That seems to be the real focus with all of these oils that, um, that I've read up on. And uh, for Elaine and I, our belief is in, in God and Jesus Christ. Um, but that higher deity, that higher entity, whatever that is or whoever that is for you, that plays into this feeling of peacefulness almost all the time, right? So there, you got to have that connection. And this, uh, this connection is going to help you establish that, that, peaceful, that peaceful feeling. Um, you can see the peaceful, the, the properties there, the positive properties there of peaceful, serene, content still, and they got used and having that spiritual connection. Arborvitae is another one. This is the divine grace oil. Uh, this has been, uh, in Latin, it means to sacrifice, and it literally invites you to sacrifice your personal will and ambition so you can find a far, more, far better fulfilling way of living. Um, this oil is very grounding. It is very trusting. It makes you relax. Uh, it, it basically invites you to take some deep breaths in and to just trust and let the flow go. Uh, there's a, a blend of oils there that you can use in a, in a diffuser. Um, I did not use this in a diffuser, but what I did do is I took these three bottles of oil and I took the caps off and I just grabbed them all and I just kind of uh, wafted under my nose a little bit 
And that is a very woodsy, uh, it's a very earthy type aroma from that. And you can, um, with the cedar wood and the arborvitae and that frankincense, it's very, very pleasant smelling. Vetiver is another one. Um, if you're feeling a little bit scattered, you got a little bit too much stress going on, or if you just kind of feel a little disconnected, this can help you get grounded both physically and emotionally and become a little bit more present, a little bit more centered, right? This is help, also helps uh, with connecting a little bit more deeply. Um, and it helps, uh, it can help carry you through kind of it's an emotional catharsis it, it's uh it's just a quiet what i found is um with better also if i got a little bit too much going on in my mind and my, and my brain just well, like won't shut off this is really good at kind of like calming that that chatter down a little bit um and again you're going to find that those positive properties are somebody who's it's going to help you be a little bit more centered you're going to be grounded uh, a little bit more present, um, and you're going to be emotionally more aware and connected once again. And the uses I got there are, are pretty cool. Um, diffusing this with serenity and balance is really good for, for kind of getting your feet back on the ground. And of course, we always get one or two kids oils in with this. Um, what I like about the calmer you look at the blend that it is, it has the lavender in it. It's got Buddha wood, it's got Roma chamomile. All of those are really good for that calming effect. It helps you um, kind of a little bit with realignment. Um, if, you know, if you're feeling a little bit overstimulated and you need to kind of throttle it back a little bit and you need to quiet that mind, this is a really good oil for kids that can help kind of restore that, that inner harmony. It's going to help the body relax. You won't um, want to go through that frantic pace um, that we sometimes get to. And we just can't like stop ourselves. And we're, when we're just so fran um, frantic with so many things to do, we can't focus on any one thing. This oil is really good and it's going to help kind of relax that, uh, that mindset a little bit. And it kind of, this oil, <laughs> what I, I thought that last one was pretty cool. Um, it's very comforting. And basically the core message is, hey, everything's going to be okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty solid statement, I think. Um, you could use that aromatically and topically. You can roll it on the bottoms of your feet, the back of the neck, over your, on your chest. Um, pulse points on the wrist that work well. Um, and you can even rub a little bit uh, in the palms of your hands and then kind of do a little gentle back massage or shoulder massage on, on the kid really helpful with that. It helps them kind of calm down a little bit. Have you guys started thinking, have you started seeing a kind of a theme with this and what's going on or, or the consistency with this? <laughs> um, some of the other oils you may want to consider, right? Aroma touch. We just talked about this with the aroma touch technique. This is a very good oil for relaxation. When you look at the oils that are, are involved in the composition of Aroma Touch, you're looking at cypress, peppermint, marjoram, basil, lavender, right? Really good at moving that. Uh, maybe you have a stiff heart and mind, and you, this helps get you a little bit more open and a little bit more flexible. Uh, holiday Peace. This. Um, really good at when you're trying to search out that that deeper meaning right uh it provides a gentle steadiness and quiet strength uh, when we look at the oils in holiday peace we got siberian fir grapefruit douglas fir himalayan fir frankincense and a little bit of vetiver in there too so again a lot of woodsy type oils northern escape is the oil of stability this really anchors you down so you don't prematurely escape this, you know, what this trial or tribulation that you're in with this turmoil that you think it, you're in, it's actually a, an opportunity for you to grow. And this oil kind of helps you slow down and try to 
um, extract what it is that you're getting, the, the what you're supposed to get from this opportunity. And it gives you an opportunity to um, kind of figure that information out as you go through. Again, this is gonna help you with grounding and it's gonna be um, accepting the discomfort of this experience without just kind of running away from it. Uh, this is This is gonna help you process that information a little bit better. Um, now, we talked last month about um, forest bathing, and um, this would be a really good oil to use for that forest bathing effect. Um, it has a lot of those fur oils in there, and that gives, it gives you that natural sense. And if, uh, I encourage you to, to read a little bit more up on forest bathing, because that um, is a pretty good thing that um, you can benefit from. If you don't have the, the woods to actually go walk in and do the forest bathing, this could be a good alternative. Uh, and then we got Steady, which is again, one of the kids oils um, that you know we rarely feel comfortable with circumstances that are out of our control. And the outcome is kind of hard to predict. This will offer that individual to kind of recenter, reground that energy, and ready to, to face what that what that unknown thing is. Um, Hinoki oil is one of the special. It was a um, special oil we got. It was a free oil for the product of the month several months ago. Um, this is an oil that you cannot actually purchase, but um, if you did happen to acquire this oil along the way. This oil is very good for natural harmony, right? It has very relaxing and it's a little bit uh, sed um, a little sedative as well. Um, these properties impart calm and order. And it's basically as if, you, if you've ever walked through a Japanese garden, this is what the oil was trying to capture. And I think they did a pretty good job at it. If you haven't experienced it and you want to, um, let me know. We, we can get you a sample of it. But if you're feeling a little bit hurried, if you're feeling a little bit constricted or rigid or tense, this is a really good oil that you will be able to just kind of take a deep breath and reground yourself and refocus. So... So Angelo, at this point in time, they need to turn in their 500 word essay on what is the commonality of all those oils. <laughs> and if they get it within the first 100 words, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll forego the others. <laughs> there you go. So, um, you made my second half so much easier. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so look, we always talk about affirmations as well, right? Affirmations are huge. Uh, we talked about it during the overwhelmed presentation. And there's some points to remember that we're always going to stress to you because it's very easy to quickly go through the affirmations and go, you know what? I really didn't get anything out of that. Well, there's a way that you want to do these affirmations in order for them to have more meaning, have more impact. So when you do your affirmations, you wanna read each one slowly and deliberately, and preferably out loud, actually, because when we hear something out loud, that's how our brain reinterprets it and says, okay, this is, this is real, this is meaningful. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna repeat that affirmation three times. Repeating it kind of um, gives, lets you know how serious it is and that you're making um, an, an intentional, gesture with this. This isn't just something you're just, these aren't just words you're merely speaking, right? So um, the power of three, it's been known that this is very um, beneficial when it when we talk about behavioral therapy concepts. If you have a habit of saying it th um, three times slowly with intent and deliberation, uh, these affirmations are going to mean that much more to you. And they're going to, you're going to really take these affirmations on internally. And I just threw up a handful of them. This is, these are ones I have found that have been uh, used before. Um, but a couple of them are, you know what? I just think I just threw it together. Um, but you can come up 
with, you can use any one of these affirmations. You can come up with your own affirmation. Um, there's plenty of other affirmations you can use, but find one that speaks to you and, and use that, right? Back to you, Sean. Um, great. <clears throat> so, um, as I alluded to, um, with those oils, there's a common theme. And what happens is, what happens if you don't have your oils? You need to be able to do something for yourself. And so that's the other part of the programs. Now, um, this next part is uh, what we call mindfulness. And in order to understand this, it's like, all right, what's, what's going on about that? Now, if any of you know me, I am a type A OCD personality. And it's like, I don't understand. And so I wound up reading an article and it starts talking about quantum physics. And it's like, that really made me turn my head. And the statement was, is that our thoughts and emotions are energetic vibrations. Okay. And they go in a little bit more. And the thing is, is that if you look at the diagram on to the right, you'll see all those chaotic lines, right? Now, the goal is, is you want to mirror so that you cancel out uh, where there's a peak, all right? You want to create a valley. And what it does is essentially, as you see where the green arrow is pointing, the, you can see there's that uh, kind of a bold white line that goes through from right to left. That's the piece. That's where our goal is going for. So um, now sages millennia ago knew of this process, all right? They knew how to calm the mind. And we've kind of lost that over the um, uh, years because our lives have become so chaotic. We're so much into this instant gratification. And instant gratification is actually creating so much more distress and dis-ease. Um, it, it's so, so scary, so to speak. Um, the new hip term uh, of uh, calming the mind is known as mindfulness. Now, there are two forms of mindfulness that can occur. It's static and dynamic. Static is where you are either sitting or standing. Some people will lay down and your body is at rest. You're quiet, all right? Dynamic is you are actually doing something. There's a gentleman that I follow by the name of Nick Zay. And he talks about the higher consciousness and, and moving up through the energetic levels. What he is finding that works for him right now for his meditative practice is mountain biking, but he can actually get in the flow and calm himself down. And when he is done, he says, it's a whole nother world out there for him. Some people can do this while walking. Um, <clears throat> when we talk a, a little bit about later about yoga and Qigong, um, it's actually a form of meditation, but it has movement with it. And that is so important to help get that. Um, there are some people with sports, particularly their marathon runners. And for myself as a swimmer, um, yeah, the first couple of laps, it's like, yeah, I, I knew that I was aware of it. But after a while, I became so totally um, unaware of anybody else in the water with me. I was in that zone and I was in that mindful state. Next slide, please. Now, meditation is really, really, really powerful. And one of the things that it does is it uh, creates this neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is awesome. <clears throat> there is some research that shows that the more, the more plastic our brain is, the more likely we are to be able to succumb events such as brain traumas from head trauma or from strokes. It also has, is showing that people who practice these things that increase neuroplasticity can help um, either diminish the onset or prevent it altogether, things such as dementias and Alzheimer's. 
<coughs> Excuse me. The other thing that they've noticed is that when we're in this mindful or meditative state, it activates that prefrontal cortex where we're very happy. And remember what we said earlier, happiness leads into peacefulness. The other thing that they've noticed, and some of this was from the studies that did with monks, is they measured their um, brain waves. And what they found is when they went into their meditative states, their brain waves were amplified. They became much more powerful, even though they were in the altered states of getting down into the alpha, the, uh, the theta, and, the, and even into some of the delta waves. What was also interesting, and both in non-monk people, such as you and I, and monks, what they found is uh, their thoughts. Um, there was higher levels of internal and external thought processing to the point that they can block things out. And that is so important, is being able to block. One of the best definitions that I heard of meditations is that it is the space between the words or the space between the thoughts. And the analogy that was given to me was think of your thoughts as balloons or cars on a highway. And as they're zipping by, you want to find that space between the cars or the space between the clouds. Now, the goal is you want to have as free of a highway as possible or free of a sky as possible. So as those thoughts come in, you just blow them away or you figure out how to create a traffic control that no more traffic comes at you. And so what this uh, leads into is this neural coordination because it enhances your um, focus, it's going to improve your memory, and you're going to learn new things along the process. As we said before, in the monk studies, um, they have little to no anxiety, depression, or addictions. Why? Because it releases, um, meditation releases massive amounts of serotonin and GABA, and you can see what happens here. The other thing is, is that remember those vibrations that we talked about before? It smooths them out so that we can get that very flat line that's in a steady state. Now, the thing that is very frustrating is this isn't something that you can do. Oh, sitting still for 10 minutes, not a problem. I'm going to be able to do this. I can do this for 10 minutes right off the bat. No, you're not. You're going to start off at two, then build up to three, then build up to four, build up to five. You need to go low and slow. Otherwise, what happens is you're going to become very, very frustrated and you're going to quit because it is much more challenging than what you thought. Um, I have been doing this uh, since my stroke back in 2019. And I can tell you afterwards, uh, with the damage that occurred, it was very chaotic for me. I'm now getting to the point where I can, I have this thing called a bed of nails and Angelo has seen it. And it's all these little spikes and I have a mattress and a, a pillow that I lay down on and it basically pushes up into, it's an acupressure uh, uh, mat. When I first laid on that, my pulse rate jumps down, jumps up uh, significantly. But now I have uh, been able to train myself that I can lay down and drop my pulse rate and have that zero thought state. So it takes practice. How and long did that take you to kind of get there, Sean? Um, I dabbled with the meditation of uh, the first two years. I'm going to say that I really, really got serious with meditation uh, probably in 2000, or, uh, 2021. So a little over a year, but it wasn't something that happened quickly. Right. However, 
the other thing is, is I was doing meditation in college and not realizing it. So uh, talking to some other mentors that I connected uh, with last weekend is I found out that this, me this meditative practice, even if you use a different form, it um, is kind of like riding the bike. If you haven't done it for a while, you pick it up really quickly. The other thing that I've also found that probably is helping, nobody can agree or disagree on this, is with also using Qigong and uh, with using yoga, these are things that are constantly reinforcing that process. So cool. I think that's one of the reasons why um, I've been able to uh, get those kind of um, uh, reactions quicker. Right. All right. So um, one of the first, uh, if you're going to start out, um, start out with Headspace. Um, they do have a YouTube channel where they have free meditations on there and they talk about it. They also have a feed-based app that's both on uh, um, the Google and the Apple platform. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that is uh, feed-based, as I said but they have hundreds. Uh, the one day I counted and I lost count at over 400 different uh, things. And some of them are theme-based. Like if you're ang anxious, they have a whole series on anxiety. Or if you're suffering grief, like when my stepmother died, um, Angelo knows that was not a, a great time for me. Um, but I use that and it helped me work through that process. Um, and they also have their other positive emotions to reinforce that. Um, and I, and if I remember, there is one on peace alone. So nice, nice app to go to. Now, the Muse, there's a number of biofeedback devices. This is one of the cheaper ones, but it also gives me a number of different options. Um, it does require this headband. And there's two different styles that you can get. Um, and then it's fee-based from there. Uh, there's one that will monitor your mental activity. There's one that will uh, measure your heart rate uh, response. There is one that um, looks for muscular activity. And I will tell you, it's super, super sensitive. Just swallowing will uh, say, hey, you're moving. Um, that, that's a little annoying to me. Um, and there's one on working on deep breathing. Um, and there's also an, uh, a side of this on the Muse app that it also can monitor your sleep and help you um, get into deeper sleep. Again, two different options here. Um, next slide, please. Now, as I said, um, static, um, um, Meditation. Some people really find it um, unnerving just to sit in absolute silence. And that's the other thing. You want to make sure that you're in an environment that is free of a lot of outside distractions. If with practice, you will be able to go outside with the birds chirping, the kids playing, and be able to focus. So there's what they call these mantra or tonal um, uh, mindfulness meditations. And as you're sitting there with your eyes closed, now, do you need to get into the posture of crossing your legs, your hands um, on your um, resting on your thighs with your thumb and four fingers making a circle? No. All right. Some of that is Hollywoodism, um, but there are practices in uh, yoga uh, that will um, in, endorse that, and I am not knocking that. It does have its place, but if that isn't for you right here, right now, that's okay. There is no wrong way to meditate. And I'm going to say that again. There is no wrong way to meditate. The only thing that is wrong is if you don't try it. Now, when you're doing this, in, in your mind, okay, you're going, as you take that nice deep cleansing breath that we've talked about before, as you inhale, you're saying to yourself, ma, 
for the length of the inspiration. And we want this to be about four to six seconds. Then as we're exhaling, you can either allow it to come out with vocalization or in your mind, oh. And you go back and forth with this ma, om. So inhale, exhale. And again, as Angelo said with the um, affirmations, it needs to be slow and deliberate. If you go ma, om, ma, om, ma, om, you sound like a siren and you're exciting yourself. So it, 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 it's undoing the work that you're trying to do. Now, um, chakras are our energy centers and each one of them has a color associated with them and they have work. And in the notes, it's a little bit easier to see, but the um, root chakra, which is uh, the closest to the ground, it's well uh, like in your perineal area, it's spelled L-A-M, but it's actually pronounced LUM. Now, when you're doing this, you can do the vocalization, and I encourage the vocalization because it starts stimulating because you want to hear it and you want to feel it. This should be a very vibratory um, sensation. So you take in your nice deep breath, filling up yourself, and you're going to come out with a long, And eventually you'll be able to go longer and longer um, holding that, but for time's sake. And so you can see the various words there. Um, so let's talk about uh, briefly about the dynamics. We've talked um, uh, before that yoga and Qigong are meditative practices, but they put the body in motion. Um, there are many different things that yoga and Qigong can do. Um, they're awesome. Play around with them. Uh, there are a variety of um, videos out on YouTube that you can get a sampling. Um, there is some good stuff out there. There are some not so good stuff out there. Uh, you have to just find out uh, which one works for you. All right. Um, the one thing I will say about yoga is if you do seem that you like doing this, please invest in a high quality cork mat and cork blocks. You're going to find that they're so uh, beneficial. When I first started out, I bought the $30 um, Amazon version. It was a neoprene mat and blocks. And while I'm not an obese person, when I positioned my blocks in one orientation and needed to lean over onto them, they just crushed underneath my body weight. So when I had to do that, I put in uh, books just to bear my own body weight. Eventually it's like, you know what? I'm doing this seriously and I invested in a mat. The other thing is, and I um, like Manflow Yoga's mat because not only is it a high quality cork mat, it also has position guides so that you make sure that uh, your body is being aligned properly. And I noticed that when I was on the neoprene mat, it's like, yeah, I guess that's where I should be. And I was hurting myself and I had some pain. Once I invested into the cork mat and started and it's like, oh, you need to have a, a leg at a 45. I had a marking for me, or you need to be at all but top. There are uh, position lines. I knew then where I needed to be. And it became such a much more positive yoga experience for me. I think I'm done with that slide, Angelo. So now how many of us like hugs? I know I do. I am definitely a hugger. And one of the things that, um, I've learned is that there is some energetics to this. Um, there was a gentleman by the name of McCrathy and he found there is this bioelectromagnetic field around our bodies. And he found out that the heart 
has the biggest generator of this out of the whole human body. Now, when we hug somebody, there is an exchange of this energy. Now, sometimes a hug is not welcomed. There may be a person that just is that toxic person, or it might be that relative that you really, really don't like, but they're the hugger, you do it. So you need to be able to know how to energetically um, cleanse yourself of that negativity. Mm -hmm. And we can have another conversation at a, a later point um, if we need to. Um, but at the same point in time, the left to left hug, you're going to find out. Um, at the conference as I was at the other day, other weekend, uh, there were a lot of huggers and I forced them into that left to left hug and they could feel the difference without being prompted. The other thing is sometimes you're in that location where you just need to hug yourself. You can do that as you see here in the picture, the hand over the heart. Now, one of the things that you can do to augment this is find something that is unconditionally loving, all right? It might be a pet, it might be your significant other, but some place that you have unconditional love, think about that as you're hugging yourself and it will augment that. Now, one thing about hugs, whether it is in person or hand over the heart, you may start to feel some emotions being stirred up. Allow those emotions to come up because as long as you have these deep buried emotions, you're not gonna be able to obtain peace. And so you're going to allow those emotions to come up. You need to uh, allow them to um, process those. And it is a necessary process to get to that piece. Um, reference 19 in the handout, um, the book by um, Matt and Ashley, The Inner Work, a phenomenal read. It's not an easy, it's not a quick read, but it's going to help you learn how to process that. Next slide, please. All right, so um, as we discussed earlier, peace is kind of an elusive concept and many feel that it is un unobtainable, but we've presented um, ways that you can achieve and maintain that. And I thank you very much for joining us this evening. Angela. You'll hear me better if I unmute my mic, but um, thanks guys. They, uh, this was fun, Sean, that was, that was some powerful stuff there. Um, I appreciate you uh, sharing all that information and doing that research. It's um, finding that peace is obtainable. Um, we just have to figure out what peace means to us and how we get there. It's got journey is going to be a little bit different for everybody. So um, let's open it up to uh, to questions if you guys have any. Um, and of course, I want to know what if you guys noticed. Um, that common thread uh, that as we went through those oils, what were some of the things that you realized about the, the different oils that we talked about? Nobody's got questions. Well, no, we did noticed, have- I just noticed that they were all, everything went back to balance and grounding and all of that comes with what is comes natural to our bodies to get right. back to that um with all the crap that's going on around us yeah what um what do you guys think about when you hear that word grounding i want to i want to hear from you guys um what does that mean what does the word grounding mean to you what do you picture i picture being really calm and just at ease. At ease. Okay. Good. Stable with feet flat on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I heard it described. I was reading something one time when it said uh, he was trying to explain grounding. He said to me, um, he, for himself, he pictured himself as a kite that was anchored to a very steady point, which allowed him to soar freely. Um, I thought that was a, a pretty good description of, of that. Um, but what else did you notice about the oils? What about the, the commonality of? 
we talk about grounding, we're talking about feet on the ground, centered. When you look at them, if you noticed, the majority of the oils and almost all of the blends had either trees or some type of ground plant um, involved with the blend, right? So it's, and when I think about that, it's something that's deep rooted into the ground. So that's what that oil can help me do is it helps me get grounded. It helps me set my roots down and to kind of settle down. So I just, as I was throwing all of that stuff together, I thought, wow, there's a lot of, a lot of woodsy type smells. And it just kind of makes sense when you're talking about steady, grounded, um, calming, it, it just makes sense that we have uh, trees and, um, and roots that are involved in that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I meant about having feet flat on the on the ground because yeah. then you can get those roots back. So do you guys have any other questions? We went a little bit over time. Again, that's kind of what we do. <laughs> There's just so much information that we want to get out to you. Um, and what Sean didn't admit at the beginning was um, with this being our first positive emotion, we had a hard time pulling information together. Uh, there wasn't a lot of study material we can go find, research material, Not well, there was, but it wasn't as abundant as those negative feelings, right? Um, next month, we're going to talk about anger. Sean's already learned a ton of stuff about that, Annette, and you know we have stuff readily available to pass on to you for that. Um, so we're looking forward to bringing you guys that next month. But um, before we wrap up tonight, do you guys have any other questions that uh, you want to throw at us? One other observation I noticed, Angelo, with the oils is many of them were connected to a higher power and like that divine grace um, was frequently mentioned. And that's interesting because when we go into mindfulness, we are trying to make that connection into that higher power. Um, I, it's just an observation um, that I noticed tonight. It, yeah. It, Smack me uh, in the face as you were going <laughs> over that. It's it's funny how we just all of a sudden you have these aha yeah. moments, right? So, yes. all right, I am going to stop the recording.